Hello, this is Chase Morrison with Resource Planning Solutions. We're a financial planning reporting consulting company focused on providing services to emerging and mid-sized businesses. Our specialty is developing and implementing business performance solutions that enable sustained value creation for our clients. Our solutions are targeted to improve financial planning analysis, financial reporting, dashboard metrics, and project management tools. If your business struggles with its ability to link business performance with strategy, we can help. You can also check us out at www.rpscgi.com. Uh, welcome back to this uh, second part of the Choose Function uh, video. Uh, in the first section, we kind of covered uh, how to set up the spreadsheet, and we we talked about how the Choose Function was uh, basically uh, doing all the financial reporting and the comparisons and how we could uh, set the ranges to change the time that the report did the analysis over. And now I'm just going to kind of go through the rest of the spreadsheet and just talk about what else is there. So thanks for joining us and we'll move right into the spreadsheet. As you'll recall from part one of our video, it is going out, it's using these two values here, the start value, the end value, and then it's using it in this choose function. So this choose function goes out and gets the first quarter revenue from the plan page. This one goes out and gets the first quarter revenue from the actual page. This does the same thing for units and units, and then it calculates the ASP for us. Okay, and then it just does some simple analysis over here. So here's just your basic uh, price volume analysis that you would do on uh, revenue results. Um, so in revenue, we have a variance on this one product. So we were favorable. We did 15.2 million versus a plan of 14.9. So we did we did uh, 300,000 more in revenue than we thought we would do in the plan. And but we delivered uh, 30 fewer units. So that would tell you most likely that the ASP is higher, which it is. The ASP was. $39 higher than we had planned. And you can see that here as well. So we'd planned to have a $1,650 ASP in our, in our model, and we actually saw $1,689. So what this is saying is, is that the uh, since this is favorable, our uh, favorable ASP more than offset our unfavorable volume. And then over here, you can see the dollars that are reflected here. I guess I should have reversed volume and price. That might make more sense. But uh, so we're favorable on price, $350. And, you know, it's pretty simple how that's calculated. Um, you know, it's um, the difference in the ASP, 1689 minus 16, 1650 times the 9,000 units is uh, is $350,000. And then the uh, the volume variance is going to be the difference in volume. So we were light 30 units, and then times the uh, times the ASP of the plan ASP of $1,650 produces the uh, the unfavorable volume adjustment. And then you can just add those two together. You know, you can look down here. You can see it. The sum of these two is 300, which matches the 300. So anyway, so this makes it really nice. You can just kind of tweak this for whatever period you want. You know, and, and this makes a nice uh, baseline because you could also uh, put prior year in here too, which I would suggest you doing because that's kind of really what you want to know is you want to know, you know, how am I doing versus plan? How am I doing versus last year? And then you want to be looking at kind of the, the differences in between, you know, the products, product A, the families, and how they're all adding up and affecting total revenue overall. Then down below here, I also put in just a, a simple little graph. So this graph, you, know, you can look at this in more detail. But you know, down here below, I uh, I'm basically um, bringing in the plan and actual data. Although you know, sorry, I kind of skinny down this one column just for aesthetics. But suffice it to say, you know, this is product A one. This is the plan, and this is the actual revenue. So it's going out, and it's it's just summing what's in those ranges, you know, from January through the end of the year. So, you know, this would be for the plan. And if you look at the actual, you know, it goes to 20,300,000 in April. And since it's just through April, then the numbers are the same throughout the year. And then this, you know, I'm just going down here and doing the same thing for all the products plus the total. 
And then I created a chart, and that chart is referencing, you know, this this area right here. So this chart is referencing this area. And um, this is one little thing you should know if you do charts is, is if you're trying to do a line chart, um, you, you want to uh, have that line chart reference, you know, the period that you want in the range. So say here, I want, I want my range to go through April, which is what it's doing here. If, if you don't do that, um, you know, what, what you might end up happening is, um, let's say, whatever function you had uh, brought, you know, it said, hey, there's, this is, um, you know, there's no activity in May, so therefore I'm going to just have put a zero here. If you were to put a zero here, you know, your chart would end up looking like that. You know, you would end up with, you know, with it going to zero in May, which is not what you want it to do if you're showing a trend line over time. And, you know, it doesn't go through the whole whole uh, number of time periods during the uh, during the time period or the uh, time period of the chart. So anyway, so that's one thing that this chart does. Okay, it it only measures it for that period of time, and then I just kind of set this up so it also uses this little drop down box. So you can uh, you know if you want to look at the revenue for product one A, then it does that, and then it also changes the title up here for you. You know so this thing, you know, again, I'm using the choose function here to change the title. Um, you know, and you can just pick whatever uh, product you want, you know, accessories, you know, look at what's changing, what are the big drivers, you know, so you could, you could play around with this however you want to and change it and make it better. But, you know, this is kind of a good starting foundation. So again, um, you know, you can go out to our website. Um, you know, this example is available for download if you want. It's, it's right here. Uh, if you'd like to take a look at the uh, kind of the text description of this function where I kind of explain in a little bit more detail that might be a little bit clearer how I'm using the sum function, or I should say the choose function. I don't talk so much about the sum function, but I do talk about the, that. It's here, and obviously if you're looking at the uh, YouTube video, you'd select it here. If you have any feedback or comments, you know, please feel free to give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, you know, if you have any ideas to make this better, you know, give us a give us a ring or shoot us a message. Appreciate it. Hope to hear from you uh, again. You can get to us at uh, www.rpscgi.com. And if you need any help with uh, financial planning, reporting, analysis, and Excel give us a call. You can reach us at 818-307-4956. Have a good day. Bye-bye.